listening to the Simon Pulse Connecting Consciousness Show, produced by Ever Beyond Radio and broadcast on Wolf Spirit Radio on the first and third Sundays of the month at 7 p.m. UK time. Simon actively encourages you to join the conversation by using the Ask Question menu link at the top of the page at wowwowwow.wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen. Please come early to ask your questions. Now, on with the show. The next two hours will be full of debate, interview guests, and up-to-date news. Please join Simon in playing active role. Connecting Consciousness Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Oh, yes. The 19th of March, 2017. Just get that in there. Hello, everybody. Um, a slightly later uh, Connecting Consciousness, mainly due to, um, well, I call it Nightmare Fortnight, which is when the uh, American clocks change and then nothing else changes in the world apart from the American clocks. And then two weeks later, everybody else catches up. Uh, so uh, for that reason, we're kind of compromising. We're about halfway through the, the gap hour, and um, Simon is now clear and uh, available to hear us. How are you, Simon? I'm fine, thanks, JP. Normally we run from 7 o'clock uh, GMT until 9 o'clock, and obviously we, we've started a bit earlier. That's right. Uh, to accommodate, you know. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I wanted to sort of do the usual update, and I, I'm going to do the... the, the uh, thanking people for donations. I'll do that in the second half of the show because we've obviously started differently, but I'll do that in the second half. I wanted to do the update. Um, uh, first thing is to, to tell everybody that the uh, chemtrailing has increased dramatically, both in the United Kingdom and Great Britain. Um, and please don't <clears throat> take too much notice of people who start telling you that chemtrailing is nearly stopped or it has stopped or it's being reduced. Uh, I will need to say to you that um, the, the very uh, crazy people, the, the evil people, have decided that uh, they feel that they can bring some form of control by upping the ante. So for a number of uh, months, actually, they've been um, holed up mentally, unsure about what they wanted to do. And a sizable proportion of them have decided to come out fighting. In other words, having decided uh, on a course of action, they have decided not to um, try and make good. They've decided not to um, uh, turn their back on the evil ways. They've decided that they're going to come out and fight like hell. And that is why chemtrailing has increased dramatically. And I would be very interested if listeners... Uh, to to the show over the coming few days can just you know when they do a question just add in to that question um, which city they've seen uh, a lot of chemtrailing and what's also happening is they're now combining harp with chemtrailing um, so you're looking not just for chemtrails but crisscrossing of chemtrails and then a feathered effect or a furrowing effect where the harp high resonation is being passed through the chemtrails and exciting the particles of the chemtrails and diffusing them and activating some of the materials in them. So uh, this isn't about being fearful. What I'm saying to you is that uh, do not buy the line that we've nearly won. Don't buy the line that it's all over by the shouting. There's a proportion of these um, evil people who have decided that if they're going down, they want to take others down with them. So keep a, keep, a, keep a log, if you like, please. People, have a look out and see and, and check that out. Um, if you possibly can, if you have a lot of chemtrailing over you, don't go out. <laughs> Easy to say, isn't it? You've got to go to work, you've got to do out. But if possible, don't go out if there's a great deal of chemtrailing over you. Because at the moment, I understand they're putting some pretty um, nasty stuff into it. So that's the, that's the first thing that covers uh, a lot of countries. Secondly, the same group have decided that they want to take 
um, not literally, but they want to take uh, the President of the United States out. They don't mean they want to kill him. They want to totally um, remove his authority. And they've uh, organized a position with the Fed uh, and several other media companies to attempt to undermine the standing that the President has. Uh, that's very sad. I had hoped that some of these elite people would um, be prepared to sit around a table and hold a discussion. And ultimately, they think they can win. That's what it boils down to. They think that they can win. They think that they can get achieve what they can achieve. So um, I'm afraid the people of America are in for a bit of a rough ride in terms of um, the, the system versus the president. Um, and I think what we might see is part of the government shutdown. Uh, there will be a shortage of cash. and This will be deliberate and they may well try and close down um, some of the, the, the local government. The uh, Republican senator who was caught uh, with an, a minor and will face charges, uh, there will be a huge um, plan to undermine the Senate, the Republican control of the Senate. Uh, not so easy in the Congress, but they are going to try and undermine the Republican control of the Senate and they will target any senator now or congressman, if they can, or congresswoman, um, if they think they can remove that, trying to reduce um, the president's ability to put legislation through both houses. And it's a very sad time when these evil people could have really made a difference, but have decided that they're not going to give in. And these are people we call as Anunnaki. These are the true Anunnaki. These are the people who um, were, I use the word loosely, were bequeathed the running of the planet by real aliens, and then they decided they would uh, run the show themselves. So that's very difficult. Um, <clears throat> I think we're still on track for some form of disclosure this year. Still believe that we're on track. That's still um, looking quite strong. The uh, situation in Antarctica has developed. Uh, certain elements of hardware are on the verge of being brought out. So some of the, the technology has been successfully isolated. <coughs> Excuse me, that's the first thing you have to do is you have to isolate a piece of equipment so that it doesn't trigger something else. And that um, has been done and that will be, begin to be flown out. They're not, they're not bringing it out by ship. They're going to, most of it, they're going to try and fly out, although some of it will have to come on by boat. Now, that will begin to leak out. There will be information. There will be some form of leak out. So I want people to keep their eyes open on the, the alternative news. Something's going to come out on that. Uh, the, 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 the uh, situation in Holland, the Dutch election, the party that I thought might win came second. They are the second largest party. Um, and, of course, the stocks and shares and the financial side sort of thought, oh, that's it, the, the challenge is off. Uh, not really. It's just a, a blip. Um, there was a huge smear campaign that was done against this guy, Kurt Wilders, um, who was accused of being a Nazi, and that probably cost him the election. Now, whether he is or not doesn't matter. The fact is that the established media got in there and were able to sabotage that election. And we've got other important elections coming up in Italy, one in France, and at a later date, there'll be one in Germany. So th th this isn't going away. They've just postponed something. So right across the board, whether it's energetic, whether it's physical with the economy, there are big, big changes coming this year. Um, and so the eye of the storm, <clears throat> which I said last radio show is just moving across now excuse me <clears throat> and we are now coming into a more volatile period so i'll have more information on updates uh next radio show but people who watch or listen know that gold prices have just gone mad and as always and i always said that's a big indicator of something we know that silver took a hit and now gold prices are, are quite high some people now can't afford the gold. I mean, the ordinary man and woman in the street now is really struggling. If they want to invest in gold, they can't. It's overpriced, but that's deliberate. Um, so we're on the verge of some more issues coming very, very soon. So 
you know, just please keep your head down, but don't fall for this. We've nearly won. Everybody's been arrested. All the bankers have been arrested. All the reptilians have left. All the Anunnaki are being rounded up. Um, everything's fine. You know, I have no problem with people who put out what they believe to be their truth. But when dissemination of, of, of falseness is being put out, when fake news is being put out, um, when it's designed to throw people off track and to make people lower their guard, that's what I object to. And I've always said it and I'll keep on saying it. If we really were living in a utopia uh, or wouldn't have what's happening to us. So don't drop your guard. Um, people, please be strong and just keep an eye on it. So that's it, JP. Um, but other than that, we're ticking along okay. So thank you. We're going to move on to the questions then. Oops, there we go. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Simon, for your announcings. Right. Uh, I'm just, um, we are going to be changing our schedule just after the show. Uh, we used to have the ODD Collective. We're now going to have some connected, con connecting consciousness um, uh, roundtables. So we're going to have your group discussing your stuff after your show. How cool is that? So let's uh, get to the questions. Right. So just waiting for the page to come up. Oh, I see none. Oh, wrong, yeah, sorry, wrong, wrong, web, web form. Sorry, this is, um, uh, where is it? Sorry about this, Simon, I, uh, we changed the, uh, okay. the way this happened. Do, do you have any more, um, any more bits? That <laughs> I, I, I would, I would sing, but we would lose every listener in the world. Really? Yes. Yeah, you know the um, the whole um, uh, you were you were talking one day you were, you were talking like you were in a sort of canteen place with the mantids, and they were oh, yeah. they were singing something. They were they weren't really sing well. They weren't singing the way we we, we were singing, but there was some sort of um, it's more of a, it's more of a chanting. But it, it's not. It's when when see, many people think that aliens don't have a sense of humour, mm. <clears throat> and by and large, I suppose that's true. But there are some that. Uh, they foster a sense of humour when they work with humans because they know it's very important. Mm. And they don't use it themselves because they just don't. But they will understand the concept of it and they will show emotions to humans um, to try to form that connection. So they don't sing in the true sense of the word as we would understand it, but they will make sounds which have a, a harmonic resonance to them. And they can, I don't know if the term is pitch, but they can raise and lower it. And they do, they do express themselves when they're happy. When they are pleased or related or happy, they will make us what we would call a singing sound. Now, the reptilians are incapable of that. Uh, the reptilians do not sing, can't make a sound, and don't express themselves in a happy way. That's probably why they're so screwed up, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, whereas beings that do have a soul that's, that's, that's happy and can connect will be able in some shape or form to express themselves um, as, as we would understand, but there are some aliens that are incapable of that. And it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means that they, their connection to source is that much less. Hmm. You know, the further the way you are from source, the less you have about emotionality, really. That's fascinating. I, I always love these little, tiny little um, smidgens when, when I, you know, we're not in a formal place, and I just ask you a little question, and, and it just comes out that that's a, a total, total nugget, a total nugget. And because, um, you see, the thing is, is when I'm happy, I notice that I'm happy because I'm noticing that I'm singing. There you go. Yeah, it just, so it's like joy and joy and singing go hand in hand. So... Now, let's get to uh, the questions. I've managed to find them all. There's, there's hundreds of questions that they're in. They're kind of tucked in a different place now to uh, where, the, where they used to be in the website. So, let's have a look. Right. Okay, so I'm going to start at this morning's, uh, starting at this morning questions. Um, uh, da, da, da. Oh, they're all huge questions. Look at this. Okay, so, okay. Kick back. Here we go. First one from... Uh, all right, alien visit at night. Okay. Dear Simon, last night I had an experience that I believe may have had several times before. 
In the middle of the night, I felt my body being lifted and tilted backwards with my knees bent. As I was being lifted, I wanted to speak out, but my ability to talk was being suppressed. I started chanting inwardly. Here we go. <laughs> I just pulled this up random. Yeah? A chant I know used to bringing safety, but it kept on. I felt it turn me feet overhead and roll me over so my face was facing my bed. I was hovering over my bed, and this was all done against my will. I did all I could to resist. Suddenly, I felt awake again. I didn't know how long I had been asleep. I awoke this morning at 7.30, absolutely exhausted. Can you explain what happened to me? I feel like something was planted into my left ear as today I was experiencing a re ringing several times and a weird sensation in my head before this ringing. Is there anything I can do to help myself if this happens again? I've tried over 20 times and many different ways to reach you, but my emails don't get to you from not your fault. I think I'm being kept from reaching. Last night, last time I asked a question on a show, my internet stopped for several months, then came back suddenly. I wish you might consider doing a weekly show. There are so many questions to cover, and it would be nice to have more of your wisdom. Thank you for answering this question. Blessings, Theo. Okay, well, so, so you get I say, Yeah, I'd say, well, well, finally you have actually got the questions through, so you may not have been able to get an email through to me, but at least you got a question through. Just, just keep trying. Just keep trying. One email one day will get through to me. Right, um, yes, uh, this is all about opening your kundalini. What's happening here is that you are being physically maneuvered into a position to open your kundalini so that your psychic abilities, which you obviously have, otherwise they wouldn't be doing this, are accessed. The, the bending of the knees, the raising of the legs, that is how you activate the kundalini. Now, you'd be very interested whether you have bruising on your body and you don't actually remember how you did it. So, you know... Um, did you walk into a table? Did you drop something? Did you walk into a chair? And if you're sure that you didn't, yet you have bruising, then that's quite strong evidence. Um, how do you prevent that? When I'm not necessarily sure that we're dealing with aliens, um, I'm more inclined to think that we're dealing with corporations or we're dealing with um, secret military um, operational units. Um, be interesting to know whether your, your, your mother or your father had psychic ability. It generally runs through one parent and through. What sort of jobs any of your members of the family do? Um, often you will experience as if you've climbed up Mount Everest. The next morning you'll feel really tired. Sometimes your legs will be shaky, but you feel, feel really tired, like you had a really heavy night, but you didn't have any fun. And that is because your energy has been drained. You've been probably used for remote viewing um, or targeting certain individuals on a psychic level. It doesn't mean you've hurt them. You've just uh, tracked them or followed them psychically. Um, that, on the small amount of evidence you've given me, sounds uh, exactly what's going on. And if you can get an email through to me, then we will have a session. We'll have a Skype and obviously I can learn more and give you more detail. Um, but for the, for the, the, the listeners, um, sadly, what you've described to me is incredibly common, far more common than anybody would give credit for. There is a huge operation that's been undergoing for about 25 years on this planet, certainly in the States, Great Britain, and to a lesser extent, some of the European countries, and to identify ordinary people who have great gifts and then come after them. So, you know, this is, if this is happening to you, it's because you're special. And I'm using the word deliberate, special in the sense that you have a psychic gift. Now, all humans have a psychic gift, but only a small proportion of people have activated their gifts. And you might say, well, I'm not at all psychic. Well, no, not in the 3D world, you're not. But when your Kundalini is activated, you are working through the fourth dimension. And uh, I hope that helps. Keep sending the emails. We can hook up and I will talk to you more. Thank you. Simon, it's a real shame that they haven't cloned you. Because uh, if we, if we can, you could have one doing emails, you could have one doing websites, you can do, you know, one doing personal consultants. No, well, I'm just kidding, but uh, I know, I know, but that's yeah. that's a good point, and I will ask to answer that because, you, know, you know, I suppose a great radio show is where we can just go anywhere with it, and you know, not. It's be your show. It. You can do whatever you like with this. Well, you know, it's you ours. Can take, so. You can take people on a meditation. Um, well, I could, I could do. Um, uh, but uh, they have cloned me. There are clones of me, 
Um, they're not in operation. And I've been told that if somebody or something removes me from the planet, then they would bring the clone out to carry on the work. Now, I went public <clears throat> with when I had died, literally died, must have done, because my spine was broken. Oh, and um, a, a very nice funder has uh, asked me to um, find out how much it would cost to get um, a, an X-ray of my spine done. And they, if it's not too expensive, they'll pay for that, because then I've got evidence. This is the story where... Um, uh, I remember literally falling off a wall, for want of a better word, and then not really realising how come I managed to get back in bed. I didn't remember how I got from being out by the wall back to my bed. Many, many, many years later, um, when I was in a very small car crash, I went in and I had my back x-rayed and the doctor said, um, we, you know, we look at the damage of your spine. Um, you know, how did you do that? And I remember saying... You know what what damage to my spine and the, the trauma doctor saying well you know your, your spine when when did you do that and of course i said i've got no clue and she said you've never been to hospital and it transpired that my spine was completely snapped in half broken rehealed uh, a very old uh, wound and the doctor was sort of really panicking because she didn't know what on earth to make of this. So, <clears throat> um, and I know that I fell off a wall and I know that I had alien experience, excuse me, <clears throat> I had an alien and literally they put me back together again. And so anyway, just as an aside, she's offering to pay for an x-ray and then we can have that as evidence. You know, here we are, Simon Parks, and any doctor in the world will look at it and say, yep, that spine was broken. You should have been you know, in hospital for six weeks or eight weeks or whatever it is. And of course, I have none of that. And the reason I'm saying that is that rather than bring out a clone, the Mantids decided to repair the spine and put me back because they understand that when you clone and you bring a clone out, you lose something. You know, like everyone else here, my body um, was part of source. It was created by, by the great creator and my soul lives in that and it chose to be in that. And that's who I am. That's me. Um, and, you know, you go into a clone. It's not really the same connection. It's not really you. It's, it's, it, it, for all intents and purposes, it looks like you, but it's not really you. And, and thank God, thank God the mantises understood that because they could have said, look, his body's completely useless. We can't afford for him to be off. We'll, we'll put him in a, man, in, a, in a clone body. They didn't. But I have been told there are clones of me um, ready to run should I be irrevocably destroyed and that they can't, they can't do that. So this is the real me, no clones, my real body. So I thought I'd just throw that that's, in. Too. That's a fascinating thing because the real Simon Parks uh, has a signature that is unique, that has that... That break in the spine. What 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 vertebra is it? Do you know? Um, fairly low down. I mean, if I run my hand down my spine, I feel a lump. So you can feel it. Yeah. So there oh, you go. Gosh, so there's a, you can there's see a, it. It's yeah. a fused. There's a two bones are fused. Right. That's very interesting. Where, this is where, very very interesting, Simon. But That's, I can get this. I'll get this X-ray done when this funder is prepared because I won't do it on the NHS. Right. They'd have to be private. I'd have to go to a private yeah. doctor. But this person's saying as long as it's not too expensive, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for it. And then I can, when I do my conferences, I can actually say, yeah. there you go, look yeah. at that. And, and that hopefully, there usually is a, a medical professional, a nurse or a, a doctor or someone in the audience. And then I'll say that you prepared to say, looking at that x-ray, how long would I have been in hospital? And, you know, um, you know, it would be very interesting to have a, me a, a medical profession uh, say, well, look, you know, we would have been out of action for Black X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And yet, you see, when this trauma doctor came back from the computer, she said, we've got no record of you being in hospital for a broken back. She said, the spine. And she said, even though it was a long time ago, all the records were uh, copied onto computer. You know, they were actually put onto what they call microfiche in the 70s. And then from that into digital. And she said, there's absolutely no record of you, um, you know, uh, having any treatment and in hospital, we've got no record. So that's why I've come back to ask you. And I said to her, well, I've got no knowledge of any of that at all. I can't help you. In which case, she became absolutely confused and wanted to get the heck out of that room as fast as possible, poor, poor love. So um, <laughs> there we go. And that's more evidence. And, I mean, you know, mm. that's what we want. We want evidence. I want to be able to say to people, there you go. Look, boom. 
So, so do you yeah. do you think, Simon, or do you do you have a, an inkling that uh, at that point you were taken aboard a ship, um, repaired, uh, and then put back into bed, nice and gently? The memory, the memory I have is quite quite astounding. All oh, right, so you do have a, a memory well oh, with it. Oh yes, I do. Oh yes, I do. But it's not <clears throat> it's not a full memory. I have a memory of. Oh, can I just use the word waking up and seeing um, what I call my doctors? These are mantids who have attended my body um, over the years and working over me. And then telepathically, I say to them, what happened? And they reply, you died. But don't worry, we are sending you back. <laughs> That's Lovely. exactly the conversation. And then the next thing I remember... And this happened in the in the garden, in the yard. The next thing I remember, I'm standing by the side of my bed and I think to myself, I don't feel very well. And I just climb back into the bed now. And my best pal, the, the guy who I was best friends with at the time, was with me, had been running through the house shouting for help because he said to me afterwards, I thought you were dead because I couldn't wake you. I was shaking you, chill calling you. You didn't move. I knew you were dead. And he was panicking, running. And so when he ran back through what was my bedroom and he saw me in bed, he actually did one of those soap tape double takes. He actually was running. He stopped dead. And it's comical now. And his head moved twice. He did a double take. It was like, how the heck did you get from there to in bed? And then, uh, you know, then my my mum came home, mother came home from work half an hour later, and we had tea together, and it was absolutely fine. And and that's the memory, and that's what happened. And I'm just so grateful they didn't stick me into a plastic body and say, there you go, have another body. They said, look, we'll patch this one up. And if anybody runs their hand down my spine, they will feel that lump. So let's get this X-ray, and I'm really grateful. Anyway, let's get on with another question. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just want to keep on with that, because oh, okay. I, yeah, I've no had a back injury in that same place. Uh, okay. I had a, a bike crash uh, 31 years ago now, um, and my lower spine was fused like that. It's really okay. interesting. So here's, because here's, here's some more things that are connect that connect both of <coughs> us. Yeah. All right, this is from... Uh, Captain, 1953. Uh, the cosmic genealogy of Jews, Aryans, Asians. All right. Please, Simon, help us understand the cosmic genealogy of the races on the planet now. What is the difference between the Jewish people and the Aryan people from an Anunnaki point of view? Do they both come from the Anunnaki? Why do both believe they are chosen of God and dislike and distrust the other race so much? Some people believe that the Jewish people in Israel are not real Jews, they are Khazars, and the black people are really the Jewish race. What do you think of this? Also, who created the Asian race? Is there a difference between the dragons of China? Too many, too many questions. Too many questions. All right, so uh, let's just go back. Let's start with, um, what's the difference between the Jewish people and the Aryan people from an Anunnaki point of view? How's that? Right. right. The, the Jewish people are a, a bloodline all of their own. Um, and they were a chosen race, and I'm going to use that word, simply because Enlil uh, presented himself and presented himself as the god of the Jews, and he created a system that would keep them, as he saw it, pure, so that they wouldn't interbreed outside of their own people. Um, and he gave them rules and laws uh, to ensure that they worshipped him, and that they have had sacrifice, and that they followed a reptilian culture. So that is totally different from Anunnaki. Right? That, that is the, the main body of the Jews, and uh, that's a separate line from the Anunnaki. But the people who were running the Jewish race did come from the Anunnaki. That's that should be understood. The Kazakhstarian Jews and the, 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 the Holy Land Jews uh, do have a difference of opinion. They have different values and a different way of expressing their cultural religion. Uh, one of the major reasons for part of American operations under the old government regime of Obama to start a war in the Ukraine was to try to give the Kazakhstarian Jews control over part of the Ukraine. Kazakhstanian Jews claim part of Russia and part of the Ukraine as their true homeland. 
And this was the real reason to um, try and break this part away from Russia. The Ukrainians have always been different from Russia when the Second World War occurred and um, the German troops went in. Um, many of the Ukraine um, supported them until the SS went in and started murdering women and children. Then, of course, they turned against them. But in that interim period, many people in the Ukraine welcomed the arrival of the Germans because they believed it would remove them from, from Stalin and Russia. But the Kazakhstanian Jews believe they have a right to this part of the world and they have a completely different control set to, to the, the Jewish people of the Holy Land. So the, the, the questioner is right. Uh, obviously, he or she understands that, that th th those people see themselves quite differently. And one group um, is a more of a magical. The um, Kazakhstanian Jews have a, a more um, fundamental connection, shall we say, to the roots than the general Jewish group. So... Uh, the, cause I, the only reason I stopped you is because then the next question was about Asian people. And, you know, th it's such a big question just to talk about the Jewish race that, you know, I just can't just I know. Know, you know, uh, sweep that away and go on to that one. That, that, that's fundamental to mm -hmm. the, the control. Most of the, um, you see, there's a lot, there's a line between the, the Mergovinians, uh, who are very prevalent in Italy and the Kazakhstanian Jews. Uh, most of these are bankers. Most of these are uh, who have, uh, own huge amounts of wealth and land. And between them, they probably command maybe half of the planet. So, so these are the factions. Yes. Or the underneath. Um, yes. You've got this. The, are you saying the Merovingians? That includes the, like the Cathars and all that tradition yes. and the Knights yes. Templars and all those. And then you've yes. got the. So do, do you want to give, could you give us like um, a, a kind of brief. The, the listing of the hierarchy, like, like this goes into that and these uh, and that. So, for instance, right. if, if we're not, looking at the Merovingians and looking at the Khazarians uh, right. on it's, one side and the other. Right. Well, what happens is that you, you join a club, uh, literally, when you, <clears throat> you're invited to join a club, either through your bloodline or your religion or your, your, your wealth or your father. But <clears throat> what happens is that you say so you the people who are really really at the very top they keep a balance if you put all of the top notch powerful people into group a then group a would become top heavy and there would be no control element from group b so what they'll do is they'll try and put people in so that no one group becomes obviously more powerful than the other because then it will challenge them um, now, clearly, families will go in. So you, you, you could trace your grandfather, great grandfather, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they will all have gone into the same line. It's a bit like Yale or Harvard. You know, if you were a Harvard, you're a Harvard man. Presumably, your your father and grandfather also went to Harvard, and so it's the, exactly the same tribalism. However, the, the, the people who are really in control will not wish to allow too much power into one group. It's not so much about the groups, it's about the individuals. Uh, you could have, let's just say, groups A to Z, and Z is the lowest and A is the highest. But you might put somebody incredibly powerful into Z, so that person then takes the Z group right up to the very top, and then they have a, a reign of power for five or ten years. Then they're replaced by group G or, or group L. And that way, you divide and conquer. However, ruling families will always be ruling families, and they will be elite. Uh, and in the days of the Mafia, that's exactly what we had in a 3D sense. We had ruling families in the Mafia, whether that be in, in Chicago or whether it be in, in Italy, in Rome, who would fight. And, you know, for a few years, one group would be in ascendance and then another group would be. Um, but if you look back to the Renaissance period, in Italy, Florence, etc., etc., that is the birthplace of the, I call it the new money, that is the birthplace of a lot of these power struggles that are occurring today. And the Vatican is central uh, as a mover and shaker with all these groups. Okay. So the Vatican controls both sides? Is like the, the, Vatican, the council, the, the, the Vatican. they're on a council and they have representatives, that sort of thing? 
the Vatican doesn't control them, but what the Vatican does is it influences them um, and gives them leeway, but will get involved if a situation is becoming out of control. The Vatican um, leaves these families, uh, by and large, to run their own show, but there are certain things that impact on the decision. They have all... Um, parameters over to what decisions they can make, which is their remit and which is not. And the Vatican will often step in to say you're overstepping your mark or, you know, you should be doing more here. But the Vatican doesn't often come down and call people in. They actually what they do is they call people into an audience and then they are sort of told you've gone too far. We don't like what you're doing. You need to stop this now. But that doesn't happen very much. Okay, so now. <laughs> so uh, I'm just trying to uh, count the cards. So why do both believe they're both chosen of God and dislike the other race too much? So have you covered that? They're, they're kind uh, of rival factions, really, aren't they? Well, you see, the thing is that you go right back to Enki and Enlil. Um, and, you know, which of the two, I use the word loosely, of course, which of the two gods was prevalent with which particular group <clears throat> because both brothers went out and then, you know, uh, Enki had uh, children and they've gone out to um, create their own empires. You know, they couldn't get off the planet, so they would build empires here and they would the hedge their bets, really. They would look to see which group might be powerful or which group they were allowed to work with. Uh, you know, it's literally power play. That's all it is. It's just manipulation of people. It's nothing special here. It's just the same old game wrapped up in different Christmas paper. Will it ever stop? I mean, are we going to be able to, like, say, OK, guys, can you find another planet and go and leave us alone and stop manipulating and let us grow? Because we're quite interesting. Um, it will. <laughs> in that it, sort of way. No, I, I hear you. It will stop. But it will only stop when a sizable proportion of humanity refuses to be pushed around as slaves anymore. As long as the large proportion of people um, accept the status quo and don't believe they're any better than get up on a Monday morning, go and work myself nearly to death. Uh, and then if I'm lucky, I'll get one foreign holiday a year and I might be able to put some money away for this, that and the other. And they, they accept that as their lot. And they go on year after year after year and they just sit and watch television and, you know, or believe everything they read in the newspapers. No, we're not going to evolve, are we? But if a proportion of people actually say I'm sick of it, uh, I see through this subterfuge and I'm going to um, really um, show my displeasure, then we will change. And that is happening. You know, the, we've talked about this, uh, the human resonance. Um, the, the frequency of the Earth went up from 6.34. Uh, it's nearly something approaching the, 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 the 30s now. Now, that means that lots and lots of people <clears throat> are um, beyond the control of the, of the, of the mind lies. You know, the, the days are gone when sizable portions of people would swallow the uh, childish lies that the elite could put out. Now they've got to be really, really uh, clever lies. They've got to be hugely deceptive. They really have to work hard to even um, convince just 10% of the public. So they've lost control of a huge portion of people. So that's why the chemtrails are coming on. That's why they're going to fall back to the old fear routine. You know, if we can't manipulate people, if we can't steer them down the... The, the, the road we want to steer them down, well, you know what? We'll try and poison them or we'll dumb them down or we'll put so much fear onto them that they will be very open to what we want. And that's the route that these stupid, silly, elite people have chosen. And it's, it's self-defeating because these people had the chance to break free themselves and to um, uh, show everyone else that they too were human. But what it seems on the evidence that I'm getting is that they've just gone for the same old routine, which is OK, and um, we'll just tighten the screw a bit more. And what will happen is the public will will rise to that challenge. The days are gone when people would just be kicked about and yes, sir, no, sir, three bags, full, sir. That's not, those days are not here anymore. 
people want the truth. People are asking questions. People are becoming tired of the lies. And more and more people, <clears throat> yes, there's loads of people who are still asleep, but the sizable minority now mean that the elite are um, using more obvious methods, which will wake up more people. So it's, it's, a, it's a hiding to nothing, as we say in Great Britain. So I'm actually positive about the future, but I'm very sad that these people who could have uh, made an example of goodness have decided to fall back on their old routines. And, you know, they will suffer the price of this. No doubt about it. Mm, mm. So, um, still on this question, because it's like there is a multi multipolar question, but it, uh, the, a lot of them are, are answers that everybody wants to know. The Jewish people and the Aryan people. All oh, right. Yes, you did ask that. What is the difference? If right. I mean, are we talking like are, are they really like two colonies that landed on this planet and have rivalry over the land ever since? I mean, is it like that old? Um, what we're looking at here is is one group that is seen as the traditional uh, line, uh, the ruling line, which is the Aryan line, which is um, uh, a line of aliens who um, set up an empire, uh, which is fairly strongly connected to Orion in many ways, has connections to the Orion Empire. And uh, also has connections to the older Debrun group. And the this Those is pesky Aldebrans again. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> and this is the group that Adolf Hitler, of course, uh, not just through channeling, not just through the Vril Society uh, and others, but but his own personal experience. That's not really widely discussed, but he personally. Adolf Hitler personally saw reptilians. You know, that's, that, we don't seem to talk about that. He personally saw them. He also had a demonic possession from touching the spear of destiny. That's why Hitler invaded Austria, because he wanted the spear wasn't in the Austria. So many people say that the spear was in the Austrian Museum. No, it wasn't. It was actually in the main church, the main cathedral, hanging from the ceiling. And Hitler had seen that, and he knew that he wanted that spear but it was possessed, it had its own entity that possessed that spear. But when he went into Austria, one of the first snatch squads of the SS was to go and get the Spear of Destiny for Adolf Hitler. Um, and he was connected to the Orion Empire, the Orion aliens. He was connected to the older Debron group. He had demonic possession in him. Um, and he wanted to uh, emulate the Aryan race, which he saw as purity because... He saw that as the pure line that went back. And these are quite white or light-skinned beings. Um, so that was that. And the Jewish race was seen as the total opposite of that, was seen as the evil race, simply because the Jewish race and the Aryan race could conceivably vie for authority or vie for power um, in terms of running some part of the planet. And indeed, many Jewish people are bankers. Many Jewish people uh, are successful in banking, not least because so many laws were passed in Europe preventing Jews from running businesses. This is not understood, but there was no law preventing them from lending money. That's why Jewish people went into lending money, because they weren't allowed. There was a law in many countries saying that Jews couldn't run a business. Ridiculous. So that's why they lent money, because they, they were allowed to do that. So then, of course, they got the, the bad press as the Jews who lent money. But in terms of the energy, either the Jewish race or the Aryan race could have been considered as um, successors, um, although the, the, the Jewish race was not directly linked with the Aryan race was. It's a fascinating subject. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on. I, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Cause, all right. Because it, still, the, uh, there is unclarity, and I can feel it in the air, so I want to really narrow it down. Okay, so um, the Aryans... Okay, now, if, if I, you know, I listen to the, to the phonetics of it as well, right? Um, and so there's the Aryans that come from Alde Aldebaran, um, or Aldebaran, or Al oh, yeah, however you pronounce it. Um, uh, but uh, they're they are um, tall and blonde. Yeah, 
Yes. And not to be not to be confused with Nordics. Nordics, right? Okay. Not to be confused with Nordics. They're separate. All right. So okay. So there's there's Aldebrans from Alde, so Ad, from Aldebaran, and they're tall blondes with very pale skin. But right. Jewish yeah. people are dark skinned usually and dark haired, aren't they? Right. The um, Al, Aldebarans are. If you were to look at an Aldebaran you would be struggled to work out whether you were looking at a male or female. If you look at the face of an Aldebaran, um, it will contain both masculine and feminine features. Many of them uh, don't have a sex either way. That's an important thing to understand. Their skin is very white. It's a sickly white. It's not the same white as a Nordic. Um, they do have blonde hair. It's very thin and wispy. They have not pointed faces. Their faces are very hard to describe. They're not square. They are thin, but they aren't, um, they're not like an elf. They're not like that at all. They, um, they tend to dress in uh, tight fitting uniforms and they will usually have the sign of the serpent or the flash, which is where Hitler got his SS rune flash partly from. Also because portal technology requires two flashes uh, when you're transporting down onto the planet Earth. And so he took the two SS flashes for his SS bodyguard uniform um, because that represents the, the arrival through a portal. Um, but yes, Aldebarans, neither male nor female, height not tall. Nordics usually between six foot and six foot five. Uh, Aldebarans between five foot seven and five foot nine. All right. Okay. So those are Aldebarans and Nord Nordics, right? And but then we also have. Um, uh, well, where do the Jews come from? Where does the Jewish race? And uh, the, are they uh, a creation of Enlil? And is that why they're chosen? Uh, what's well, what's, yeah. what's the deal? Because they're, they're you know they're dark. You know, actually, there's several kinds of Jew, aren't there? There's like the the Sephardics and the Ashkenazis. Are well, all the Ashkenazis Khazarians, or yes, are there some correct. real Jews in the Ashkenazi group? Well, well, hang on. What's a real Jew? Well, yeah. <laughs> what's, a, what's a real Jew? Look, there are 12 tribes of, of Israel, exactly. and that should tell everything you need to know. Um, when somebody brings, the, oh, the jolly old figures, 3, 6, 9, 12, hmm, there we go. Um, that is a construct. Uh, anything with the figure 3, 6, 9, 12, 6 and 12 are, are the numbers of the reptilian uh, stroke Orion uh, stroke control system. Um, if you take a group of people who are indigenous to, to the planet and you say to those people, you are special, you must form yourself into tribes and you mustn't uh, have, take wives or husbands outside of your own tribe because we want to keep it pure. And if you uh, sacrifice lambs to me and you kill this and you kill that and you burn offerings, um, and, you know, then I will protect you. I do believe in the parting of the Red Sea. I absolutely do believe that because alien technology could do that. You know, um, we, we, we tend to forget that Moses was a pharaoh or the son of the pharaoh. Um, this is where the line is coming from. You know, this is this is where the Jewish line comes from. You're asking, you know, and I'm taking you back now, what where Jews come from. Um, Moses was... Uh, to, to a Jew, many of these people were Egyptian. They were family members who could have become full-fledged pharaohs and fell out for whatever reason. So if you look back, the, the leaders of the, of the, the Egyptian race were Anunnaki. But it doesn't mean all of their underlings, all of their subjects were off a spaceship. Many of them, the vast majority of them were ordinary indigenous native peoples who were brought together under superior intellect in terms of command and control um, and given rules and regulations to fashion them into a self-contained unit. And then if you infuse a people with a belief in themselves and you make them believe they're better than anything else and then you give them protection, so the Jews did have protection. They were a chosen race, chosen in the sense that the reptilian God said, you keep sacrificing for me and I will make sure you don't lose any battles. But if you stop sacrificing to me, I will take away my support. You know, it's no different. Up to 1942, Adolf Hitler won 
every battle nearly. I mean, the Battle of Britain he didn't win, but he didn't lose that, did he? It was a draw. But he won every battle as long as he was buying oil off, off uh, the bushes, standard oil. And what Hitler said in 1942 was, I'm fed up with this. I'm going to go and invade this part of Russia, which is just past Stalingrad. And I'm going to go and get all the richest oil fields in Russia. And I don't need to buy off the bushes anymore. And as soon as he did that, what happened was all the off-planet assistance he'd been giving just disappeared. It went. And then from winning nearly every battle, he lost every battle. And this is what happens, that those people who sign up to something, if they don't follow through on the deal, that special protection is taken away. You think about the, the wars that the Jews have fought, you know, the Six Day War, uh, 1967, then the Yom Kippur War in 1974. The, the Israelis won battle after battle after battle because specifically through Mossad, they have, even to this day, a connection with a particular off-planet entity, which isn't very nice. It's not nice, but it's the same planet entity that used to communicate with Hitler. Now, how crazy is that? A Jewish state with a connection to an off-planet entity, which was the same entity that was working with Hitler. These off-planet entities will work with any nation that it thinks it can control. You know, human race needs to turn around, frankly, to all of this lot and say, look, we don't mind you giving us advice. Hell, you've been on this planet and in this universe a lot longer than we have, so we'll take advice from you, but don't try and manipulate us. Don't try and control us. We will make our own destiny. And when the human race turns around, and you said this a bit earlier, JP, sort of thing, um, when we as a people, as a planet, turn around and say, we'd be very welcome your advice, but we will decide what we do then we really take control of who we are. But at the moment, we've got all the different countries all fighting each other. And that's how it's divide and conquer. Shall we move on? Fabulous. Thank you, Simon. Um, I hope that that's, you know, <laughs> um, ties it up for everybody. Uh, let's have a look. Now, um, OK, now, a lot of people are, are typing enormously long questions, but what you've got to understand is that um, it's it's better to make a really focused question um and indeed you know, somebody put his his really good one because they put it in the topic and um so rather than read all the things can you get a gin well, this is from david can you get a gin or attachment through the internet oh hang on am i right there so can you get a, a gin or, an, uh, or a, an attachment through uh, connection with people through the internet that's a really a really interesting question. Isn't it? Um, no, but you can get a demonic entity through some of the games that are being put out now. Uh, there are some children's games which um, are on the market, which I believe have a portal to them and allow some activation like that. So... In the pure sense of the word, a gin, no. Gins, gins mostly attack people through Ouija boards. Ouija board is a portal. Um, the, the, the concept of the Ouija board never came from humanity. That was given to them. Humans constructed it. And the best way I describe it is you walk down the street to the sidewalk and you see a lovely window, shop window, <clears throat> and in it some beautiful cakes. Oh, I like those cakes. So you open the door and you go in. The Ouija board is the shop window. And when you touch the Ouija board or you come within close proximity of it or you activate it, then they consider you've opened the door and they believe they have a contract with you, that you've gone into the shop. And now in Britain, we have in London, we have black cabs. In America, you have yellow cabs and they all have a taxi stand or a taxi rank and they all queue up. And the same way the gin just queue up. And when somebody activates a Ouija board, the first one in the queue just comes straight through and it will attach to the most psychic person around that, that Ouija board. Usually the person that's activated it, but not exclusively so. And the most um, possessions that I have to remove off people are uh, demonic possessions or gin possessions because they have used a Ouija board. Sometimes these things stay in you for 20 or 30 years before they activate. Um, they are chameleons, and they mimic your energy, <clears throat> um, and you don't you don't detect them. 
and then they activate and then they start making your life an absolute misery. So um, no, not a gin, but yes, uh, some of these uh, programs, specifically in the last 18 months that are coming out, could potentially carry demonic energy. Good question. Thank you. Very interesting and very relevant indeed to people. And so what about, you know, getting rid of dem demons and jinns across the Internet using Skype and things like that? Is that using a different connection? Because you're connecting personally, aren't you? You don't, they don't, they can't use through Skype. Um, what, what you're more likely to get an attack is our conic attack. Uh, through through internet connection, it is Arconic, which is artificial intelligence. This is where the attack comes through. They will, because they are artificial intelligence, they use digital technology. That's why we have digital technology on the planet, not to make our lives easier, but to allow certain things to move around the planet and spy on us. <clears throat> so you don't get demons through Skype, but you get Arconic attack through Skype. You get Arconic attack through anything electronic. Um, but demons will tend to require a um, – right, I'm really trying to think how I'm going to put this into human language. Um, they need a house. They need a home. They need a base. They need a – like the genie needs a lamp to live in. So if you create an app for a phone or you create um, something – I'm not saying Pokemon, but that's a game that I'm familiar with in the 80s. But if you had something that had monsters drawn on it or evil creatures and it was part of another game, well, that could house the energy of that creature because it's, it's actually giving shape and form to something that, that we would talk about as a monster. So that type of evil energy can find a home even temporarily in that, and that can then be sent down the internet. So, so it's residing, just like I talked about the Spear of Destiny had a demonic possession. This was um, the spear that uh, Centurion Longinus was said to have speared Jesus with. So it had this history, therefore the demon could attach to the spear because of this history. Well, if you create something, um, then, then demonic possession can attach to it, and then that can travel and be sent. So it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult game for someone like me because I have enough time clearing your traditional um, demonic stuff. And then with the advent of digital technology, then, you know, these things can pop up really quite and almost anywhere, really. So it's, it's quite a challenge, really. Yeah. But, yeah. Excellent. But there's a, the, the game, there's a particular game, it's called World of Warcraft. And uh, what I found interesting as you were talking about this, I, the, I, a guy I used to know, playing a band together a long time ago, all right, um, uh, told me once he sold his soul to the devil when he was lit, when he was younger. Now, I don't know whether he was joking or, what, or not, but he is completely addicted to this game called World of Warcraft. And even him and his wife, they sit there every evening playing World of Warcraft on their computers next to each other. Right. How well, about that? You know, does that, is that like, that's their deal, you know, um... Uh, generating these uh, negative uh, images. Well, I would say that's not particularly healthy. It's nice to go out for a little walk and um, hear the birds sing or, you know, watch the sun <laughs> setting. That, that, I think, would do them power of good. And it's not good for your health to sit in front of a screen without going out and having some exercise. Um, I'm not going to um, talk specifically about this because I haven't got enough knowledge about these pro these programs um, there is a program that was very, very popular last year that you would, you know, go out with your mobile phone, your cell phone, and you would point it at things and it would say whether there was a, you know, a, a being or a creature there, you know, one of these, you collect them. That's the sort of thing that concerns me. So I, I, I can't say a specific program because I think anything that contains what I've described could potentially hold something unpleasant um, and you know look we live in a modern world and we use computers and we use phones but we do need to balance our lives and we need to get out more uh, something wants us to sit with our faces glued to a screen and reduce the humanity in us and I'm absolutely determined to say to people that you need to balance your life by 
celebrating your humanity. Go out and connect with nature. Um, you know, we can do this. Uh, go out and see the trees and the rivers and the sea and, and just remember what it's like, what real organic life is. You know, yes, these super high definition screens can produce a real good copy of whatever environment you might be looking at. But it's a copy, for goodness sake. It's a copy. Why would we want a copy when we can go out and see the real thing? Are we so lazy that we can't even go out and walk? And I, I, I'm, I'm to blame often. There's a lovely little park um, that was pointed a very, very special friend of mine said, you know, you need to go out and you need to go out and every day and go to the park and just have 10 minutes. And this 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 person is absolutely right. But we all have incredibly busy lives. But it's how much do we want to do this? If you really want to do something, in most cases you can. And I just say to people, celebrate the fact that you are connected to source. You're a real living human person. Do not be drawn into the electronic world. And that's my fear. It's not the reptilians. It is archons. It is the artificial intelligence that wishes to subsume all blood and flesh and bone and replace it with a robot. That is that is that is the, the real enemy that we face. And I'll just finish off by saying this planet has been earmarked uh, as a firebreak. And anyone who's been a fireman or a firewoman knows what I mean. If you have a forest fire and you have to bulldoze down part of it to create a barren land that the flames can't get across. In, in Britain, London, the Great Fire of London, 1666, the only way they stopped the Fire of London was by dynamiting houses uh, to, to create a gap so the fire couldn't jump from one house to another. And this planet is earmarked as a firebreak to prevent artificial intelligence uh, spreading right across the dimensions. Now, that is really important because if we do not defeat AI here on this planet, um, it's a bad deal. So we've got to do that because they are pushing AI, whether it's the transhuman agenda, whether it's all these stupid videos on YouTube about robots walking through a forest or, you know, walking this try and saying, you know, if you break your arm, you know, we can do this. And we've talked before, JP, about the, the film in, in the 1970s with Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. They were already pushing transhuman agenda back in the, the mid 1970s. You know, a robotic arm, robotic leg. Doesn't it make you better? No, it doesn't. Um, yes, if you have a genuine accident, motorbike, car crash and fantastic, but not let's replace the human body with a robot because that is uh, a a concept that's been dreamt up off this planet and I just want people to remember as useful as a computer is or as a cell phone is it's not your life your life is the wind in your face the, the sun um, the, the, the fact that there are animals that you can you can talk to and stroke and play with that that the children can go out and play and run in a field that you can plant crops in the ground and see them grow. That is what being human is and learning and experiencing, to reach out and touch somebody you love. Robots can't do that. That's what they want to do. They want to replace the human race with robots. Um, so I, I'm absolutely passionate that, yes, some reptilians are not very good, but that's not our major enemy. So there we go. I've gone on a bit. When is our tea break, by the way, JP? Well, you know, we started late, so uh, let's just have a look. All oh, right. Good time. You've got a good sense, sense of the time. Yeah. Sometimes um, I have. <laughs> you know the hour. You know, it's like, oh, good. Um, so let's put on the tune and uh, go and put the kettle on, shall we? Um, shall we do? How? Oh, that was I was going to put on uh, Pink Floyd's The Embryo, which is 10 minutes long. That's too long. Um, how about... Uh, no, that's too... Uh, no, that's too depressing. Uh, that's depressing. I got a lot, You know, a lot of music is really quite depressing, but everybody loves it. Um, no. But um, how about... Oh, yeah. There's, this is my band um, with the fabulous Stu Evans on uh, vocals. Um, singing A Piece of My Heart by uh, Janis Joplin. So it's a guy okay. singing a Janis Joplin song. So um, turn your speakers down if you're uh, uh, that sensitive kind of person. <laughs> anyway, that, uh, that was my band a couple of years ago in, I think, 2012, uh, doing A Piece of My Heart. And uh, it's just, um, it's my birthday, so <laughs> it's 
know. Well, it was my birthday yesterday. So, so. It was your birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 56, which is... Are you Are you 61? Are you, um, are you born in 61? No, I was no. born in 1959. 59, right. Okay, so... I'm still in my 50s. Uh-huh. Two years older. So, oh, two and a half, because you're September, aren't you? September something. I am indeed. There we go. So, let's... I'm just a spring chicken, really. I, I've i heard. Do you want to do your... Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, these things just pop out. <laughs> do, do you, would you like to do your uh, donation thingy? I will do. Wait, are we actually on, ra- on live now? We're back live, yeah. Well, that's good. I that's didn't good. know we were. I oh. thought you were still making tea. No, no, no. no, no. But, um, welcome back. <laughs> good, OK. Yeah, I wanted to um, thank people for um, sending their donations. Um, and I, I, as ever, I just literally pull them out randomly. Uh, in the hope that um, you know everybody at some point will will get a name on, uh, I should be very organised, but I, I I don't have that time, I'm afraid. So I, I just do what I can to get the names up, and I'm always very grateful to people. Um, you know, it it keeps me going. So uh, thanks to to Ravi, to Ida, to Christina, and Sherilyn, and. Um, Jekka Tarin, I hope I pronounced your name properly there, to Charlotte, and Flora, and Nadia, Theodore, Vincent, Catherine, Dolly, and Robert. Um, smaller than, than, than normal, um, but some people have been incredibly generous, and I'd say to you that there's a person who wanted to pay for, um, you know, uh, an X-ray. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is what helps, it what keeps us going. So... Uh, and also thank you to people who um, have just given their thanks. People who've said, you know, to Simon, you you made a, you changed my life, or you know, thank you for what you're doing. And it's so lovely because you know you you do what you do, and you don't. I don't think about it. I just do what I have to do. And then when someone stops me, and there was uh, I was in 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 my town, Whitby, only a weekend ago or so. And uh, I was in the health food shop, and uh, uh, there was a guy there who I did a, a consultation with maybe two years ago who recognised me straight away. And I didn't recognise him until he turned properly round to look at me, but maybe he just recognised my voice. Um, and uh, the person I was with, uh, it's a very, a very special person I was with, um, and this person said to me after this, well, thank, thank goodness that he met you in the health food shop and you were buying um, toothpaste without fluoride, <laughs> because if you'd been in the butchers buying a great side of beef, it would look terrible. So we had a good old laugh about that. Uh, <laughs> and it's just nice that, you know, I, I do go out and do what I say I do. And I do meet people who I've had consultations with, and, you know, to have had a, an impact on their lives, to have, have helped them or to have brought change or to have got them to do their own research is why I do this. It's literally about empowering people so when people give me a donation um it's them recognizing that they are putting something back they can't come around and have tea with me but they can offer help in in a way and so you know thank you to those people because um without their support all of us whether it's you jp or me or anyone else um you know we couldn't do what we could do and if we didn't do what we did there would be no up-to-date information coming through to people. There wouldn't be the drive to uh, bring change. So we all support each other. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and what else was there? Yes. Um, thank you to everybody for uh, donating to my thing, my personal thing and also Wolf Spirit Radio thing. Uh, what I'd also like is some volunteers, particularly those with computer skills, and, or at least website skills, you know, social media and things like that. Um, and uh, it'd be nice to create a network that takes the stress off of all these individual points. They seem to be sort of the bottleneck points. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's have a look here. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. This is from IWP. Don- uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, this question is about fairy tales. I have an old book of Grimm's fairy tales that I was reading the other day, and it suddenly came to me. As I was reading about a boy being killed by his stepmother and made into stew and fed to his father, 
that these stories sound very much like the kind of tales told to satanic Illuminati children to scare them. Could it be that these stories are of things that did happen to children and parents of these occult societies and are now told as fables and fairy tales? The real grim stories are nothing like the Disney versions we see out of Hollywood. What say you, Psyman, about the Brothers Grimm? Psyman? Hmm, that's an interesting... Oh, you heard, um, you heard, <laughs> you heard some syllables uh, there, yes, Psyman. I always listen for all intonations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, um, that, that came out of me, I don't know where... I, mean, I know, I but... know. I'm always on my guard, joking. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. Um, well, what's interesting, because I was with someone only the other day, and we were talking about... Uh, Hans Christian Andersen and Grimm's fairy tales, and so it's synchronistic here. And some fairy tales were written by good people to warn other good people to be aware and look out. Other were, were written by good people to um, give a direction, a spiritual direction. Uh, this is morally wrong, this is right, you should do this. But another group were written by those who were practicing in satanic cults who were merely uh, putting their own culture into um, uh, a story form. And I'll just, just give an example that should be known by the Western world, which is Little Red Riding Hood. And this is one of the ones that uh, we were discussing only a few days ago. So Little Red Riding Hood was a satanic uh, version, or at least the elements are placed in there. And anything where someone is chopped up into pieces and gobbled up or eaten, um, uh, is not, I'm not saying, as the questioner is, is proposing, that this happened to their family, therefore they made a story. But what I am proposing is that this was the cult or the culture of sacrifice. And we don't have to go too far, do we? We, we can find that in, in Aztec cultures, um, Sumerian cultures. It is the reptilian uh, command and control and indeed the Jewish culture. So uh, in these uh, fairy tales, you are being bombarded or children were being bombarded, less so now, with elements that were trying to cut them on the straight and narrow and warn them. And then other elements that were uh, very dubious and were traumatizing children um, and trying to, or in one way, trying to normalize it. I mean, I've got, uh, we talk about Alice in Wonderland, I've got a very rare copy of the original manuscript, it was presented to me, the original manuscript uh, from um, Alice in Wonderland, but it wasn't called Alice in Wonderland, it's called something like Alice, Alice's Adventures Underground. That's originally how it was written. And I think my copy version is 1866. And in it, the, uh, the, the, the copies that we're all familiar with, is a guy called John Tenniel. He was a gifted illustrator and he was brought in to draw Alice in Wonderland and the Cheshire Cat. And he drew them really well. And his, his drawings are iconic. But this version, this copy I've got, is Lewis Carroll obviously wasn't his real name but that's the name he went with Lewis Carroll's own drawings that's what makes this copy really special that he was an awful illustrator that's why they got someone in but he drew them and I have got his drawings and they are some of them are, are inappropriate and in fact in the copy I've got the foreword uh can't hide it and the, the forward says something along the lines of and making a joke of it as they always do ha 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 Freudian uh, scholars would like to make much of drawings etc 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 in this book however it is our opinion that this is just chance and what we've got is a particular drawing of two courtiers fondling each other now, that may not seem much in 2017 where nearly anything goes, but we're talking about 1866 and books for children. And remember that um, it was not uh, uncommon for Lewis Carroll to take a 12 year old girl on a boat up a river. And that's documented evidence. I'm not saying anything happened. I'm not 
saying anything like that. What I'm saying is I have got a copy of his original book and I look at those drawings. I don't think it's chance what I'm looking at. So that type of energy of children being abducted, children being sacrificed or eaten or traumatized runs through the culture of humanity very deeply and has done for a very long time. It's evil and it has to be got rid of, you know? So, uh, yes, good question. Thank you. Excellent. So, now, this question is, uh, um, I can't, no, there's no name. Um, what is the difference between the Church of Satan, <laughs> founded by Anton LaVey and Illuminati Satanists? And where does Alistair Crowley fit into these groups? Is he still aware? You know, in your opinion, what was she, what was he trying to do with all his magic? And was he as evil as some people make him out to be? I'm not quite clear of the question. So the question is so asking... Alistair Crowley, was yeah. he uh, uh, a bit connected with the Church of Satan, founded by Anton LaVey, or oh. was he an Illuminati Satanist? And uh, does he fit into either of these groups, or did he predate them? Um, and what was he trying to do? I mean, it basically is saying, you know, was he as bad as the, the, the world has cracked him up to be? Uh, and, you know, does, does, I mean, and my question is, did he fit, does he fit in with the cabal of today? Where does he right. fit in with that? Right, okay, well, the, the organization that Alistair Crowley was most associated with is the Order of the Golden Dawn, uh, which he had a hand in altering or founding and being part of. So the Order of the Golden Dawn uh, <clears throat> was the, the group that he um, was most associated with. Alistair Crowley was elite. Let's make that clear. Alistair Crowley wrote to MI5 during the Second World War and said that he should be an agent for them. They declined his offer. Uh, there is some truth in Alistair Crowley's claim that he taught Sir Winston Churchill to make the V for victory sign. Uh, Hitler, um, Churchill used to go around making the V sign, which is V for victory, and Alistair Crowley always claimed that was his invention. There is some interesting debate to be had around that. Um, anybody who practices black magic... Uh, is doing so because they wish to influence or alter the status quo. Magic, per se, is not evil. It's the hand that wields the wand or the hand that moves the energies and the intent behind that. You know, witches weren't evil, but they were hunted down because they were women with power. It's the intent behind it that matters. You know, you could be a, a magician who uses his power for good. That's not evil. You're a magician who uses it for bad. That's evil. So when you bring in um, uh, child sacrifices, um, satanic rituals, well, that's obviously wrong. That's obviously evil. That's a fourth dimensional energy that's being fed. Alistair Crowley was absolutely... Uh, a magician, a black magician, and uh, he understood the Illuminati concept and was part of that. But like many people, he became independent because if you get too big for your boots, the organization, uh, if the organization feels it can't manage you, it will push you out into an offshoot. Think of a big tree, it's got lots of branches. So you've got your control network, which is the... Um, the core, which is the trunk. And then if you get someone that's getting a bit out of hand, you stick them out on a branch. And so Alistair Crowley was stuck out on a branch. Um, and he created the, 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 the Crowley Tarot. The Crowley Tarot cards are not evil in themselves. But if you use them with evil energies, then they are incredibly so. I mean, most tarot readers, most, not all, of course, but most tarot readers won't admit to the fact that they hold a tarot, a Crowley tarot pack, because it's got such a bad um, label. But in terms of power, divination, and energy, a Crowley tarot uh, will will give you some very good 
accurate answers. Uh, Rider Waite Tarot, which um, uh, if you look at the Order of the Golden Dawn, um, the Rider Waite Tarot, the Crowley Tarot, uh, they all share a, a, a joint family history. Um, so was Crowley as bad as they paint? Well, I don't know what they paint him as. I will tell you that I wouldn't, I wouldn't invite, if Mr. Crowley was alive, I wouldn't invite him into my house for a cup of tea. So that's the best way I could answer that. Okay, I think that more or less uh, nails it there. Good. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Solomon. This is a good, this is a good interesting. All right. Okay. Um, joy, song of love. Okay. Uh, who or what, Simon, is Solomon? I have read that Solomon refers to the son, Saul, and was not even a real person. What is the song of Solomon in the Bible about? What are the lesser keys of Solomon and the greater keys of Solomon? Are these satanic, luciferian, or archonic texts? Were these texts meant for magic and the goetia? Sorry, one more question. How does Solomon fit into the Knights Templar? So, essentially, there is this central figure, Solomon, in in the same way that we have the central figure Jesus, is he like a, a composite, or was he really a real person, or was he? Really? Well, your 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 question is as oh, your uh, observation, JP, is as interesting and pertinent as the question. Um, where do you split the Jesus energy from the King Arthur energy? Where do you? bring the line between King Solomon and Moses. <clears throat> These energies are intertwined. Um, no one person on the planet can claim to be, you know, um, Admiral Lord Nelson or um, Napoleon, but there are energy fragments from those individuals, whether that's Jesus or Solomon, that exists on the planet. And a number of people can connect and pick up these fragments and have that connection doesn't mean that person is you know um moses or jacob but they have a strong drawing to that because they have collected that so the question is about solomon um solomon through david could trace a direct line to the anunnaki Solomon was a magician. Solomon was uh, trained in what we call the lesser keys and the higher keys, which are the, if you go your tarot card, you have the, the high canine, and then you have the lower canine. You have the uh, cards with naming power and the lesser cards. Um, the Kabbalah is a strong magic uh, which would you associate with the, the Jewish uh, higher-ranking cultures, which allowed, through training, uh, mystery schools, and naturally uh, obtaining the power through the divine right to have that power, allowed Solomon to conjure demons and use those demons as he would. And Solomon was not a good person. Uh, but Solomon ruled uh, with fairly good judgment. So Solomon actually wasn't a particularly nice person, but his judgments for his people were beneficial. That's a quite hard concept to get around. Uh, so the actual uh, wisdom of Solomon, when the story of the two women who claimed the baby and both women claimed that the child was theirs, and they had no ID or evidence to prove, because the baby looked like both of them. And so Solomon said, well, look, the best thing to do is to get my senior guard captain over here, and he'll cut the baby in half, and you can have that half, and you can have that half. And the real mother just went absolutely ballistic. So Solomon said, well, you're the real mother, you have the baby. He used concepts that were not known on the planet um, he was like the, the Sherlock Holmes of of those days he was able to engage with people and understand the truth and to give the people what they needed and yet as an individual he was still wrapped up 
in his own culture because he at that time hadn't evolved. He was participating in rituals <clears throat> and he participated in <clears throat> child sacrifices because he hadn't yet evolved. And that was his, his time. His time was to lead his people um, and to make it great, to build the temple, to have the Ark of the Covenant placed in the centre of the temple. Um, and the, the question goes on about the Knights Templars who, through their own esoteric knowledge, came to collect the um, sacred items that hadn't been looted and were still there. And in fact, there is one item that came from the temple that the Knights Templars retrieved and brought back and is now in hiding in Scotland. There is an item of Solomon's um, keys, which is in hiding in Scotland. And people perhaps don't really fully grasp the role of the Templars and their connection uh, through their own learning, actually. Remember that the Knights Templars and the Freemasons don't see eye to eye. They're very different.